Welcome back to Indigenous Contributions to the World. Today we're looking at the letter E for embalming. 5000 BC, South America, Andean cultures. All right, embalming. And it talks about embalming being the process of treating a corpse with preservatives to prevent decay. All right, it is one of the main aspects of mortuary science and part of mummification. Egyptians, who are well known for the practice of embalming in conjunction with mummification, began the practice during the first dynasty in about 2000 BC, according to anthropologists. Such embalming in indicated a belief in the afterlife. The Chinchoro, who lived in what is now Chile, were embalming as well as mummifying their dead, including embryos and fetuses, 7,000 years ago. Some experts believe the practice may have begun a thousand years before that, making the Chichuro the world's earliest embalmers. <clears throat> Archaeologists have discovered that both sexes and people of all socioeconomic statuses were embalmed after death. So it didn't matter what class you were in society, what level you were in society, this was a common practice. The Chichuro removed the internal organs of the body before treating them. They then turned, they then skinned the body and dissembled it. Next, they reinforced the spinal column as well as the legs and arms with support of wood and cane. Once they had treated the organs for preservation, the corpse was reassembled. They then filled the body with cavity, they then filled the body cavity with fiber and feathers before coating it with clay. The clay was sculpted and painted so that it, so that it resembled faces and other features. Finally, the embalmers placed the wig on the body. Another group of South American Indians who embalmed their dead were the Paloma whose culture arose north of where the Chichoro lived and who were embalming by 4000 BC. Salt was a major ingredient in the Paloma process and the person was buried in the floor of the house he or she resided in. For a body's burial, the knees were drawn up towards the chin and against the chest. The Inca of South America, whose empire was established in what is now Peru in about AD 1100, <clears throat> excuse me, were embalming their dead at least by the 15th century. Pre-colonial Inca bombers, <laughs> pre-colonial Inca embalmers removed the viscera and internal organs from the body. Both the body and the cavity were then washed and allowed to dry. After this, the body cavity was packed with cloth and allowed to air dry. Once the body was embalmed, it was later mummified. Archaeologists have found several traces of chemicals on the remains of Incan dead, but only, pow but only powdered cinnabar, a form of mercury, has been positively identified. Cinnabar which is a red, which is reddish in color, is believed to have religious significance. All spice was used by Mesoamerican tribes to embalm the dead. So if you look at this, it's just talking about mummification and embalming. It's talking about the afterlife and spirituality. Now, if you, when you look at this, it talks about how these things took place across different cultures. But one thing that was interesting to me that I found out when you talk about Egypt is that they were using certain forms of the hemp plant uh in mummification that was coming from that had to have come from the so-called new world from the americas but they were using this same ingredient in africa coincidentally they say that this technique of embalming and, and mummification actually was taking place on this continent prior to africa so that's that's interesting that's an interesting note so next time we're going to be looking at the letter f i appreciate you for tuning in for this episode with embalming, and I'm going to see you next time.